June 24th meeting order. The chair de detects a quorum. I want to welcome everybody. If everybody could uh, find a seat, appreciate everyone coming down. Um, just very quickly, a couple housekeeping items. Um, masks are encouraged uh, if you're vaccinated, which this is probably controversial, but I hope everyone gets vaccinated. I've been vaccinated. I haven't grown any horns or anything, so, uh, but I hope everybody does. And so I appreciate everybody. You can wear a mask, of course, and so we appreciate um, everybody coming. It's nice to be in person with everyone. Uh, I know personally I've missed the personal interaction with the commissioners and, and everyone, so thank you for coming today. So uh, first of all, um, commissioners, is, uh, well, another um, housekeeping item. So we're having a few um, IT um, kind of microphone issues. So um, we have a backup plan, but if the microphones seem to be kind of going in and out sometimes or they get stuck, and so if that happens, we're going to take a a break try to fix it if we can't we have a backup plan for that so I just want to be patient with us tonight we're having a few um, technical um, issues that may arise so we hope that that doesn't happen but I just wanted to give everybody a heads up especially the commissioner so all right so um, next is the adoption of the agenda and so commissioners you've received the agenda uh, and we'll need a motion to adopt is there a motion to adopt so there's been a Motion and a second. Any discussion or questions? All right. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed no. Ayes have it. And the agenda is adopted. Next is item C, which is the approval of the June 10th, 2021 minutes. Those were also sent out earlier. And so we'll need a motion to adopt the minutes. There's been a motion and a second. Any discussion? Any questions? No. We'll make sure. All right. Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it, and the minutes are adopted. Now we are on to the recognition of the council members, which, uh, as we see everyone coming in, we we go in order of y'all coming in. So uh, <laughs> just to be fair to all the council members, and so um, I saw Councilman Hall first, but I don't know if you want to go now or uh, during the item. During the item, Councilman? Okay. Thank you, Councilman Hall. I saw uh, Councilman Syracuse. Uh, so, there he is. Come on up, Councilman. And oh yeah, come over here, Councilman. It's it's probably easier, and I hope that's on that microphone. Can you hear me? Oh, if you'll. There Let's we do go. that. Yeah, perfect. Uh, good to Thank see you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Commissioners. Uh, I have uh, item 13 on your list, uh, 2021 SP 37 001. Uh, this is for 1908 Lebanon Pike. Um, few things come across me as a proposal that I look at and I say, wow, this is uh, pr pretty perfect for the site. It's uh, had a great meeting with neighbors. Um, improves infrastructure, so I know it is on consent, so I'm he just here to uh, speak in support of it and uh, ask that you keep it on consent, but if it does come off, I'd like to be able to hear it tonight, because I know you have those tweaked to the rules, right? All right. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, sir. Councilor Hauser, and I had the honor to work with your daughter, so... Yes, I am. Uh, I followed my daughter. I did the uh, if opposite. If you'll you put the microphone. I followed mom, I followed daughter. Uh, I am speaking to item 22 on your agenda. It is not on consent. Uh, the reason what I'm asking for today is that we defer this to give time for a community meeting. We had deferred it once before. The community meeting did not happen. Uh, we have, I think, two rows of people stand up that have some real concerns about, thank you, you can sit down, that have some real concerns about this project. I'm asking for a deferral so we can have a real community meeting with the 48 hours notice and an opportunity for everybody to ask their questions and have those uh, concerns addressed. Uh, there's some real safety issues with this property as proposed. So that is my request that we please defer item 22, which is 2021S-044-001 Temple Heights. Thank you. 
And I think the developer has, uh, so he's here too. Are, are you the developer, sir? Okay, Okay. hold on one second, okay. So, so let me kind of explain the situation. Um, generally when the, the commission, uh, when a council member asks for a deferral and asks for community meetings, we take that extremely seriously. Um, and so, and then I'm gonna ask the staff to tell us about the timing of the issue and so generally developers are willing to work with the council member to, to defer those particular items. Um, so let, let's ask about the, the staff about the timing piece before we. This one can be deferred one more meeting, but it would mean that if it's deferred to the July 22nd meeting, then it, it would not be able to be deferred again unless okay. the applicant agrees to it. Okay. Now, sir, do you have a question? Well, uh, so we'll do that probably, I think commissioners, we should probably do that under the deferral piece because this is during the council member discussion. So we'll come back to you for sure, okay? We're, we try to get everybody in, but thank you for your, for your comments. All right, that, thank you, Council A. Hauser. You have anything else you're? Okay, good deal. Uh, council Lady Porterfield, I saw there, come on up. Welcome. Is it on? Thank you. Yeah, you got to kind of talk close into it. And there's some wipes probably that we probably need to stick with after you're done using it. Or, yeah, you might want to wipe it before. So here we still have some protocols for COVID. For COVID. Yeah, there we go. And, and the, yeah. Thank you so much. I am here um, for item number 21, 2021 SP 027-001, which we know has come up a few times before. Uh, I will be speaking in opposition to the project at this uh, point in time. I've been reached out to by some of our constituents uh, with some questions and concerns about the project. Um, as I spoke to you all before about it, there are questions about um, just the, the lay of Couchville Pike and some of the potential things that are coming down the pike. Uh, the, the property is extremely close to where the airport is supposed to be expanding their runway. Um, there are also questions about the future of the hard in place um, expenditure. And you know, we know that that's been 20 years in the making and not really knowing uh, how that's gonna impact the, this particular uh, project. So uh, I've requested a study for Couchville Pike to, to get a better idea of the capacity of that particular area. There are concerns about the infrastructure and if adding this project, if the street, which is a very narrow and old street, if it will be able to handle um, this level of uh, traffic that the project will, will bring. So at this point, I will be speaking in opposition and I will stay here for when it's heard. So thank you. Thank you, Council Lady. All right. So I saw some former council members, but we don't do former council members. Are there any other ca oh, council? Oh, council lady, would you like to speak now? Thank you. Appreciate it. Any other council members? We'll make sure we get folks. All right. All right. Seeing none, we're on to item E, which is items for deferral withdrawal. And Sean, I think you're going to handle that for us. Chairman, I, just to clarify, did we want to entertain the discussion about the subdivision deferral after Sean reads the list, or would you like to entertain that yeah, let's, before? Um, let's, yeah, let's go ahead and, and do it now. That way we can get it on the list. That's a great idea. So, so just to um, clarify Bob's or Mr. Lehman's comments, and for the viewing public, um, subdivisions have certain timing constraints that other applications don't. And so if the commission doesn't act within a certain amount of time, then the subdivision can be deemed approved. And so we want to make sure that we are cognizant of those um, timing constraints to ensure that the public has an opportunity to comment and the commission has an opportunity to give meaningful review. And so typically, uh, Chair, if the applicant agrees to the deferral, 
then that sets up one scenario. If the applicant declines to agree to the deferral, then that sets up a different one. And so what Mr. Lehman was referring to with respect to the timing of this subdivision is if the applicant today declines to agree to work with the council member and declines to agree to the deferral, um, then we could defer it ourselves at the commission or you could defer it one meeting and then hear it at the next meeting. And so that's my... And that's on item 22, right? That is on Timber item Heights. 22. Thank Timber you. Heights. Okay. And so the council lady spoke on this item and so the, the developer has a few comments, but we always need to get things on record. So if you come up to the microphone. No, him. Council lady, you already spoke. Yes, ma'am. And Can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. All right, thank you for recognizing me. I'm but you got to hold it really close to your mouth, unfortunately, okay. and that's why we're using the wipes today. So, okay. thank you. Uh, my name is Paul Lebovitz. I'm representing the developer for this property. Uh, what uh, the council member uh, did not acknowledge is we had an impromptu neighborhood meeting. I did not know there was a 48-hour requirement, and I contacted several of the neighbors, and probably a half to two-thirds of them are sitting right behind me. My feeling is that while they're here, we might as well air it out. She touched the big big deal, because this is R15, and we're just doing R15, no up or down zoning, nothing special. It, what was really voiced, and she just mentioned it, was traffic, and we're at the concept stage, and I explained in the meeting a couple of nights ago that we, at the next stage, that's actually when traffic and parking can be talked to about signage, slowing the road, things like that. We are not there actually to discuss that problem. We, we acknowledge it's there, they've told us. So with everybody here tonight, we just assume, I just assume that we continue the meeting and presentation, and then these people don't have to go to another meeting and then come back again for a hearing. Okay, uh, so like I said earlier, uh, you know, we, we generally try to defer to the council member and if there's one community meeting able to do that we I mean I can't speak for the Commission but that's generally our, our policy but we'll let the Commission thank you we appreciate it and we'll is there a discussion Council A. Murphy while I understand the developer um, feels that it would be in their best interest or all of the community's best interest to have the presentation and discuss those issues through public hearing now, I think that it would be more appropriate for the councilwoman to organize a community meeting that people can attend in their neighborhood. Uh, this is not the forum for a community meeting here. And so I think that a, a community meeting where I'm sure there are more neighbors that would like to have their voices heard. So I think it'd be more appropriate to defer this one meeting um, and, and take it up next because also I, I don't want them to have a community meeting, get feedback, and if we change the public, if we close the public hearing tonight, we couldn't hear from them again. So I think it'd just be in everybody's best interest to defer. And so you can sit down. Thank you. Appreciate right. it. Um, any other discussion? So the motion would be to um, put it on the deferral list for one meeting. I, that's my motion, to okay. put it on the deferral list for one meeting. It's a proper motion. Is there a second? Second, any other discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it, and it's deferred. Uh, it will be put on the deferral reading. So y'all stick around until we officially defer it on the, on the list. So now we are back on to... Chairman, can you hear me? Can you hear me? You want to, this one sounded, this one sounded like it was about to be. You want to try that one or no? Sean's <laughs> IT that's in the room.
going to um, do item E, which is the deferral list, uh, and then item F, which is the consent agenda. Um, and then, commissioners, this is the situation. We, we're going to hear items 18, 20, 21, and 23, but with the microphones being the way they are, I feel like, uh, the especially on the controversial ones, that the public could not hear us speak without the microphones working. And so we're going to try to go as long as we can and hear also item number 19, which is the periodic review, which we have to hear tonight because of timing issues. So we're going to try to get, get through one item, if that's okay, with the commissioners. And I am so sorry, but we're going to, I know the director is going to work with general services to get our issue fixed. And thank you, director, for doing that. Um, and so, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll charge the council with getting, getting us proper equipment. Um, I'm just joking. Um, and so we are now on item E, which is the items for deferral. Uh, Sean, um, just in my discussions there, I wanted to make you aware, just so you could read that this off into the list, that the Heartland North case number 23 will also defer, has confirmed deferral. It's a subdivision, so um, they have affirmatively agreed to that as well. So, Sean, let's make sure that we have items, and it, this is without objection from the commissioners, okay? Items 18, 20, 21, and 23, which Lucy just, which Director Kemp just stated to be on the deferral list. Okay, without objection. All right, thank you, Chairman. Um, items for deferral on this evening's agenda. Item 1A, 2007 SP 037002, the Blue Hole Bell Road SP amendment. The staff recommendation is to defer to the July 22nd Planning Commission meeting and the associated case item 1B, 95P, 025007, the Millwood Commons PUD cancellation. Staff recommendation is to defer to the July 22nd meeting. Item 2, 2020S179001, Entrust Homes on Paragon Mills. The staff recommendation is to defer to the July 22nd meeting. Item 3, 2021S072001, Mossman Heights Subdivision. The staff recommendation is to defer to the July 22nd meeting. Item 4, 2021S079001, the Marshall Gale Cowden Cook property. The staff recommendation is to defer to the July 22nd Planning Commission meeting. Item 5, 2020Z013TX001. This is a text amendment uh, pertaining to owner-occupied short-term rental overlay district. The staff recommendation is to defer to the July 22nd Planning Commission meeting. Item 6, 2020Z119PR001. This is a rezoning for various properties in the Germantown neighborhood. The staff recommendation is to defer to the July 22nd 20, uh, Planning Commission meeting. Item 7, 2021Z061PR001. This is a rezoning for properties on Lebanon Pike. The staff recommendation is to defer to the July 22nd meeting, and I would note that Commissioner Blackshear is recused on that item. Item 8, 2021SP020001, Ben Allen Ridge. Staff recommendation is to defer to the July 22nd meeting. Item 9, 2021SP034001, uh, 12610 Old Hickory Boulevard. Staff recommendation is to defer to the July 22nd meeting, and I would note that Commissioner Blackshear is recused on that item. Item number 10, 2021SP039001, 1300 Herman Street. The recommendation is to defer to the July 22nd Planning Commission meeting. Item number 11, 2021 SP 040001, uh, 1301 Herman Street. The staff recommendation is to defer to the July 22nd meeting. Those items were um, requested to be deferred as the meeting was getting started, just to clarify. Um, let's see. And then um, the next item for deferral will be uh, item number 17, 2021 NL002001, 
2400 10th Avenue South. The staff recommendation is to defer to the July 22nd meeting. On page seven of your agenda, item 18, 2021Z005 TX001. Um, this is a text amendment and it will be deferred to the July 22nd meeting. Um, item number 20, 2021 SP023001 North Edge Hill Commons. Staff recommendation is to defer to the July 22nd meeting. Item 21, 2021 SP027001 2377 Couchville Pike. Staff recommendation is to defer to the July 22nd meeting. Item 22, 2021S044001, Temple Heights. Staff recommendation is to defer to the July 22nd meeting. Item 23, 2021S069001, Heartland North. Uh, the staff recommendation is to defer to July 22nd. Um, and I would note that Commissioner Blackshear is recused on that item. Item 24, 2021Z055PR001. The staff recommendation is to defer to the August 26th Planning Commission meeting. Item 25, 2021Z050PR001. The staff recommendation is to defer to the July 22nd meeting. Thank you, Sean. And so before, uh, so before we get to that, um, we need to confirm uh, on the record uh, item 23 to be deferred by the applicant. So I think Mr. White or the attorney, come on up. Mr. Murphy, thank you. We really appreciate your understanding and cooperation. We do uh, agree to defer and we waive the 60 day uh, time period. So thank you, sir. Appreciate that for item 23. So, Sean, listen to... Is Councilman Hall still in the room? There, there he is. Councilman, so what would be helpful is on your item, which is item 18, if you'll come up and for the record, uh, because we had disapproved it, if you'll agree to defer based on technical issues, that would be great. Is that okay with you? You have to use the microphone, though. But, you can, that's yeah. fine. Okay, so you agree to defer yeah, item to the twenty second? Yeah, of July. to the yeah. July second meeting. Twenty second meeting. Thank you, sir. We really, really appreciate your cooperation and patience with us. And uh, thank you, Council Lady, for helping us with that. We really appreciate it. All right. So let me double check with our attorney and make sure we have if we need to do anything else. Mr. White. Chairman, I would like to ask, please, with respect to item number 21. Yes, sir. Uh, that we are here and have not agreed to defer that unless it's being done at the request of the commission because of technical difficulties. Yes, it's a request. Is that, would that be okay to defer one meeting to July 22nd? We would do that. Thank you, Mr. White. We really appreciate it. Uh, I feel like we're operating on a shoestring with our microphone, so... We'll make sure we get those fixed. Thank you, Mr. White. And we really do apologize uh, for that. This We usually run a efficient meeting, and so I really do apologize for that. So these are the items for, I think, legally that, let's check with our attorney. I don't think there's any other uh, mandate for us, to, for anybody to agree to defer. We can defer the rest of the items. Okay. 
So, Sean, the items that will be def uh, deferred are items 1A, 1B, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 17, 18, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. Is that correct? That's correct. Commissioners, you've heard the items. Is there a motion to defer those particular items? Motion. There's a motion in a second. Any other discussion? Seeing no discussion, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. And those items uh, are deferred. Now we're on to item F, which is the consent agenda. Uh, thank but you. if y'all will hold one second, let us get through the consent agenda, and then we'll let we'll take a kind of a, a, a pause, and then this will only take a, a, a minute or so. So go ahead, Sean, on the um, consent agenda. First, as information for our audience, if you are not satisfied with a decision made by the Planning Commission today, you may appeal the decision by petitioning for a writ of cert with the Davidson County Chancery or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of entry of the Planning Commission's decision. To ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been met, please be advised that you should contact independent legal counsel. Uh, for items on consent, items on the consent agenda will be voted on at a single time. No individual public hearing will be held, nor will the commission debate these items unless a member of the audience or the commission requests that the item be removed from the consent agenda. So the items on the consent agenda this evening begin with item 12 on page 5 of your agenda, 2021 CP 011001. The South Nashville Community Plan Amendment. This is a proposal to amend the South Nashville Community Plan by changing from a district industrial policy to urban mixed-use neighborhood policy for properties on Lebanon Pike. The staff recommendation is to approve, and I would note that Commissioner Blackshear is recused on this item. Item number 13 on page 6 of your agenda, 2021 SP 037001-1908 Lebanon Pike Residential. This is a request to rezone from RS10 to SP zoning for properties on Lebanon Pike to permit 40 multifamily residential units and nine single family lots. The staff recommendation is to approve with conditions and disapprove without all conditions. Item 14, 2021 SP 029001, Hilltop Estates. A request to rezone from RS10 and R8 to SP zoning for properties on West Trinity Lane and Old Buena Vista Road to permit 193 multifamily residential units. The staff recommendation is to approve with conditions and disapprove without all conditions. Item 15, 2021 Z051PR001. A request to rezone from SP to R15 zoning for property located at 401 Kinhawk Drive. The staff recommendation is to approve with conditions. Item 16, 2021 Z060PR001. A request to rezone from RS 7.5 to R8 zoning for property at 2412 Old Matthews Road. The staff recommendation is to approve. And then under other business, item 26, contract amendment for Miranda Clements, and item 27, contract renewals for Logan Elliott, John Broom, David Klein, and Nick Lindemann, and item 31, to accept the director's report. Thank you, Sean. And so, commissioners, the items are for on the consent agenda to be passed tonight as a group are items 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 26, 27, and 31. Is that correct, Sean? That's correct. All right, commissioners, you've heard those items for approval. Is there a motion? Move to approve. That's a proper motion. Is there a second? Second. second. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. Those items are adopted. And so now the only item that we're going to consider tonight due to technical difficulties and a timing issue is the periodic review item number 19 for for White's Creek, the COVID correct. White's Creek. Is that correct? That's yes, Chair, correct. that's correct. Okay, so we'll let everybody move out, and then um, item 19, y'all can move forward after. Er, we'll take just a couple minutes to do that. So we're not taking a break, guys. We're just we'll let everybody move on.
So if everybody could go ahead and, and try to exit the room so we can continue to hear item 19. Thank you for coming in. All right, everybody, if we could get everybody to, if you're here on 19, item number 19, that come on up to the front, and then everybody else, if you could uh, help us out, and, and uh, we appreciate it. So thank you, everyone. And so we are on item number 19, and we are ready for the presentation. Great. Thank you. Um, you kind of have to talk close, I think. Okay. Is that good? Okay. Um, this is Amelia Lewis with Metro Planning presenting item number 19 tonight. If everybody could take their conversations outside the room, please, that would be great. We just, out of respect for everybody, we want to have a proper hearing. So we appreciate everybody coming out. Hold on, Amelia. If the team could help us get them close the doors close the doors all right go ahead Amelia. okay thank you um item number 19 tonight is a request for a periodic review of the covid white whites creek uh, specific plan or sp uh, staff's recommendation is to find the sp to be inactive and advise council to rezone Um, per Title 17 of the Metro Zoning Code, um, there are specific requirements for the Planning Commission. Hold on, hold on a minute, one second. There's sound coming from somebody. I'm hearing things. All right, go ahead. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> Thank you. Um, per Title 17 of the Metro Zoning Code, um, there are certain standards that the Metropolitan Planning Commission um, may review a specific plan district or portion of to determine whether the SB is active or inactive and to provide a recommendation to council. Um, so as the, the specific plan review, the site is zoned SP. Um, it's shaded on the site in gray. Um, as you can see, it has frontage along Clarksville Pike and the surrounding zoning districts include uh, residential as well as some agricultural AR2A and some limited uh, commercial along the corridor as well. Uh, Metro Council approved the preliminary plan in 2010 um, for the Cove at Whites Creek. Um, this was proposed as a mixed-use development um, with a variety of housing types um, to a total of 215 units and 15,000 square feet of non-residential uses. Um, there are large expanses of open space, as you can see from the green, um, as well as two proposed entrances um, from Clarksville Pike, um, shown um, just north of the proposed units fronting uh, Clarksville Pike. Um, and the plan included several stub roads to provide for future connectivity. Um, here's an aerial view of the site, which is outlined in red. Um, and you can kind of see uh, what's on the site today, as well as the surrounding character of the area. Um, so one of the reasons that we're hearing this case tonight is the timeline um, set forth in 
uh, the zoning code. So it requires that within 90 days of the request being filed, um, that planning commission provides a recommendation um, based on activity or inactivity. In that case, um, the, it, the request was initiated by the council member on April 13th, um, and those 90 days extend to uh, July 11th. Under Title 17, the commission is first required to determine whether the SP is active or inactive. Um, and there are really three key findings for that. Um, and the first is um, four years has passed since the SP was initially approved in 2010, and it has not been amended or previously reviewed prior to this request. Uh, the second is regarding construction. No construction has taken place in the SP under review, and lastly, no right-of-way has been acquired and no off-site improvements have been constructed. Um, additional standards state in the code, um, it's outlined that the Planning Commission may also take into consideration the aggregate of actions, if any, taken by the owner of the SP um, within the last 12 months um, regarding the SP that's under review. Um, so some background um, on that uh, activity. Uh, planning staff rec received a pre-application meeting request, um, which is kind of standard when um, somebody's coming forth with either a new plan or a revised plan um, in early May of this year. As the request for a review of the SP was initiated prior to this request, planning staff did not meet with the applicants for a pre-application meeting. Um, letters and um, letters from the owner as well as other parties associated with the property um, were included in the staff report as well as the supplemental public comment uh, material. The owner indicates that they have generally taken the following actions on the property, including marketing the property for sale, discussing the sale with several parties, meeting with the community and council member, and some preliminary design work on a revised plan. Um, staff finds the specific plan to be inactive as the requirements of Title 17 have not been satisfied and the actions taken in the past 12 months are limited. If the Planning Commission determines the SP to be active, then no further action is required. If the Commission determines the SP to be inactive, the Commission is required to recommend legislation to the Council to reapprove, amend, rezone um, the property or rezone the property. Um, so there are two parts to this. Um, the first is that the commission would determine whether the existing SP is consistent with the policy on the site. And um, secondly, if, um, and secondly is to provide a recommendation on if the SP should be amended or rezoned um, in whole or in part. Um, so the site is outlined in red. Um, this is our policy map here. Um, it's all green. <laughs> um, and so we have several different policies on the site. Um, T2 rural maintenance, T2 countryside, as well as conservation policy due to some steep slopes. Um, the intent of both of the rural policies is to maintain the rural character of the area um, and provide for low intensity development. The preliminary SP is not consistent with this policy. Um, the existing policies on the site um, would provide for much lower dense, much lower density um, development than what was proposed with the preliminary plan. Um, the preliminary plan would permit non-residential uses as well as a substantial um, intensity for the property. Um, while the SP under review proposes the preservation of open space, the uses and intensity of the proposed development are inconsistent with the policy. Um, given staff's finding as outlined in this report and the inconsistency um, with the policy, staff recommends um, that the commission find the SP to be inactive and advise council to rezone. That concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, so I'm going to have to use the other microphone since we're having more issues.
this, yeah, we'll keep that on. I'm sorry, everybody. And so the commission knows these microphones here are helping to make what we discuss um, audible to the public on the television. So it was really the adjustment we're needing to make is so that folks in the audience can hear. And I'm hopeful that having everyone up close means that folks will be able to hear us. But we do have two ways of making sure there's public, um, the public is able to hear the deliberations on this one. We have recommended that we go ahead and hear the item regardless because of the timing constraints. So we apologize. So we'll go ahead and open this item for public hearing and thank you for the presentation. And then the applicant is really the council lady. So there she is. Yes. Come on up. And then I'm going to hand you the microphone back. Sean, is she able, forgive me for I'm moonlighting here, is she able to use these or are they, they also they, part of the? They only listen. They don't, oh, the ones in the table? Yes. They're also part of the. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioners. Can everybody hear me? Okay, okay great. Yes, I uh, applied for the revision of this SP. Uh, it came to my attention several months ago when the uh, developer wanted to uh, discuss the possible revision of the SP. There was one committee, community meeting held to discuss the proposed revision, and uh, it was during that discussion. Um, there was a lot of concern from the community about the SP and the lack of um, progress on the development over, I guess, a 10 to 11 year period, and that is why I requested the review of the SP. Uh, I appreciate and support the staff's recommendation to find the SP inactive. I feel that uh, the current SP is doesn't fit our current um, desire and, and and maybe even our current policy for the neighborhood and than, than it did 10 years ago. And it needs to be reviewed and, and, and re reevaluated, started over from scratch. So I support the recommendation to uh, uh, render it inactive and uh, to rezone the property possibly to the bank zone. Thank you. I'm sorry. Things we do these days. So, all right. Thank you, Council. I appreciate that. So now, um, usually we let the owners have more time, but we talk to Council, and the owners will all get two minutes, as many owners would like to speak. So, uh, we are ready for the proponents. So, Chani, are you going to kick that off? Or? I'm an opponent. Oh, you're an opponent. Oh man. Okay. Are there any it might be helpful to clarify because we recommended inactive. Who's what we're asking? Yes, yeah, so who supports uh, we the recommended staff? Uh, inactive, and so we're asking folks that are asking for it to remain active to go first. So, Sean, it, would that be you? We're we're now we're on the same page. Here's the microphone back. So Sean, we're gonna we're gonna you know you'll have two minutes, but so here's the other issue that we've had tonight. The timer's not working properly, so we'll let you know when you have thirty seconds. How about I time myself? Two minutes. So this is, what his shield time you? Sean will let you know when you have thirty seconds. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. Yeah. I'll interrupt as I did in the virtual meetings if necessary. I'll just continue my career as a radio. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, um, I'll try to be polite, but I will tell you when you have 30 seconds, and then I'll tell you when your time is up. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, Council Lady Murphy, and Planning Commission members, my name is Sean Henry, uh, 511th Avenue North. I represent the property owner, Winston Templin, who's here. The evidence that you've received and the testimony that you're about to hear 
uh, is a collection of affirmative action taken by my client and others to develop this SP. The review standard here is the aggregate of actions. That's what we're talking about. Um, it's not actual construction, so that's important uh, to, to understand. Unlike most of the occasions when you have someone come before you and state that you made a decision in the past, you set a precedent, therefore you need to act in such a way, in this, in this case, that's exactly what we have. There was a precedent set in this same type of review in 2008 with the Nashville Area Habitat for Humanity that came before this planning commission in defense of their PUD. Um, and, and that record I would like to make uh, officially and have that submitted as part of the record in this case. Uh, I've provided you with a letter attached to that letter on page three as a comparison of the facts in that habitat case with this case, the Cove at White's Creek. I'm just gonna refer to it as the Cove. Uh, in the habitat case, the staff reported in, the re in their staff report that the construction plans had expired, the fire hydrant plans had expired, the water and sewer availability letter had expired, and that a grading permit, a grading permit had never been issued. Certainly no construction could have ever taken place. Despite that lack of evidence in support uh, of what Habitat was trying to, trying to say to this commission, of course, none of you were on that commission at that time. So that's very fast clock, I, I protest that clock. So despite that lack of evidence, this commission decided that Habitat had sufficiently met its burden of demonstrating that they have taken sufficient actions to be deemed active. And so the, your staff report pretty much acknowledges as much when you take a look at what this particular developer has done and my client. So therefore, you must find today that the aggregate of actions that have been taken uh, establish this SP as having attained an active development status. Appreciate that. Uh, this is not unlike the Habitat uh, decision, so we ask you to consider that. Thank you. Yeah, I used the previous one, uh, and this one's only got one white left, so we're going to have to share it. <laughs> we have one. Okay. Oh, man. It's, we'll blame it on Lacey. Thank you, Mr. Hamden. Now, if you'll throw that away. Thank you. All right. So uh, we are on folks that wish to keep uh, the SP active. Who's next? Come on up. Good evening. Thank y'all for letting me speak. And please state your name and address. My name is Winston Template. I'm the owner of 5000 Clarksville Pike in the trailer park there. Um, I just want to establish the, the layout of how we, how we began to get into this project. Back in 2006, when the trailer park came up for sale, I went and had a conversation with Councilman Walter Hunt at the time and asked him if he would support some type of a development out there. And then we looked at it and we said, and he said that he would. So we commenced to hire Womble and Associates to, to work on a development for me. And over the next year, we got that. We submitted it to planning and zoning. And in order to make my numbers work, we were looking for seven units per acre. Planning and zoning approved four units per acre, which wasn't enough for any return on investment. So we went back to the drawing board. And then about two years later, Councilman Hunt contacted me and asked me if I would resubmit it a second time. And we did, we resubmitted it. And when we resubmitted it the second time, the, the planning and zoning came back with five units per acre. So the five units per acre still was not establishing what we were looking for. And we went back, so this brought us all the way back to late 2009. And Councilman Hunt asked me a third time if I would come back and, and work on the project so we could do it to, um, to bring some affordable housing into the community. And I said, yes, we can do it. So we, we did that, and he told me that if he couldn't do it, that he would get council support, and he felt like he had enough people in council to, to overturn planning and zoning. So we brought it back in front of planning and zoning for the third time, and that time planning and zoning approved the, the SP as it was. 2008 hurt us with the crash. Then whenever everything started coming back, when we got a zone at 2010, by 2018 before the economy ever recovered to do anything and then then we started marketing it 2020 coronavirus hit us so that last year was all out and then we started marketing into last year and we got several interested buyers at this time thank you all very much thank you next 
And just for everybody's sake, whenever you start speaking, just if you'll state your name and address, we appreciate it for everybody. Thank you. Um, I'm Scott Andrews. Uh, I'm a broker with NAI Nashville. Um, and I wanted to just start by um, saying uh, good afternoon to the councilwoman, uh, to the chairman Atkins, and to the members of the planning commission and staff. Um, I work with Peter Shea um, at NAI Nashville, leading uh, commercial real estate firm here with, in Nashville with over 400 offices worldwide. Uh, I come before you asking you to deny the petition uh, that uh, the councilwoman has asked to revoke the SP zoning. Um, we, Peter and I, uh, won this assignment in December of last year and immediately began marketing the property. In so if you could put the microphone a little oh, I'm closer. sorry. Yep. Uh, we immediately uh, began marketing the property and received several offers. Quickly went under contract negotiations with um, NVR uh, Ryan Holmes, and um, we relied on this zoning that was existing in our marketing. And I hope you guys uh, received and had a chance to look at the marketing materials that we put out. We emphasize the fact that the property is already zoned. It was an important element. We spent a lot of time putting our materials together and marketing the property, and um, we. Uh, tasked our staff with a great deal of time and uh, simply want to say that, you know, we recognize this body's charge for making decisions that significantly impact the community and landowners as well. I think it's important, uh, particularly when bestowing new zoning, but in particular, I would say that when you consider revoking zoning, it's even of, of gra higher gravity. Uh, and I do want to say that I hope you will deny the request. I humbly request that you do so uh, in light of uh, the nearly 700,000 residents in Metro Nashville and certain others uh, who are moving here and facing an, an acute housing shortage, uh, that further limiting the supply of housing only makes it less affordable for its residents and the economic benefits to the city and taxpayers, which is only aided by responsible land use practices. Um, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Next, if you wipe, yep, Sorry. let's keep. Keep up our good hygiene. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Dwayne Cuthbertson, 409 Merritt Avenue. Uh, I work as a land use and planning consultant with Womble and Associates. And I want to start out by apologizing to the commission. Um, this case would likely not be in front of you today if it were not for my insistence on open communication with the council member and community as part of a good faith effort. Uh, development's contentious, as you all know, and as a consultant gu guiding that development, I always find being open while hard and sometimes uh, maybe even not necessary, it creates goodwill and fosters an environment of trust. Um, if I'd known our efforts to be open were going to be penalized with this review, I would have suggested uh, that we get straight into the development review process and ask uh, for that pre-app meeting back in January. Uh, we'd likely be halfway through the administrative final site plan uh, approval process as well as the grading permit process, and this periodic review might actually be moot. Um, Despite having the existing entitlements, we started reaching out to Councilmember Gamble about six months ago, and we spent a few months engaged with her, uh, making sure that we signaled we wanted to be good neighbors and develop the site with the community. Um, again, certainly had we known we were racing an expiration clock or a periodic review would be filed, we would have accelerated our efforts for public review and submitted our applications without the public engagement. We hear frequently that developers need to be better at engaging the community, and that's what we were attempting to do. My fear is that if this is the result of a good faith outreach, it's hard not to take it as a signal to be leery of community engagement in the future. So uh, we were making, we were trying to make that good faith effort prior to utilizing this SP. Uh, regardless of the outcome here, we'll continue that good faith efforts to work with the community. So I'd ask you to find our good faith efforts to engage the community as the initial steps of our development process and find the SP active. Thank you. Thank you. Next, of the folks that would like to keep the SP active.
Good afternoon. Uh, I am Danny Womble. If I you could hold them, you got to hold it, the microphone real closer. close. Thank you. Does this work? I'm Danny Womble with Womble Associates. I did the original design of this project, and I did the, the revised plan design uh, this year. Over the last 11 years, I've had dozens of people talk to me about this project and about developing it. Uh, in January, when I had a contract with Ryan Holmes to redesign the site plan to incorporate their building types, their unit types, which was one and two car garage townhomes. Uh, to date, uh, we've spent $17,000 in engineering work consistent of 112 man hours over a three month period of time. Uh, we have removed the commercial use in that site plan revised design. The stacked flats were removed. The surface parking townhomes were removed. We did grading plan design, site plan design, road layout, drainage, retaining walls, did grading studies to balance the cut and fill on the site. When Councilmember Gamble requested this periodic review in April, the design was already complete and ready to submit to the Planning Commission. I'm asking you to vote that this SP zoning is still active. This periodic review really, to me, is uh, illegitimate. Uh, it is a move by the neighborhood to oppose the development. Thank you. Uh, after spending three months working with the neighborhood and the council member. The involvement with the council member Gamble was for courtesy to her and transparency to her and to the community. It was not required of us, but we did it anyway. Uh, if you rule that the SP is inactive and council the zoning, you'll be sending a message to other developers and builders not to be transparent with the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Is there any other folks that wish to keep the SP active to speak? To keep it active, come on up and state your name and address. Thank you. I don't have, my name is Peter Shea. I live at 813 Evans Street in Franklin. I work with Scott Andrews in the marketing of the property. And uh, I am uh, shocked to be in this position, having spent most of 2021 on this project, uh, having made commitments to my broker that this was worth all of this time, given the zoning in place. Uh, I relied on that information. I made representations to many home builders across the community about it as our lead piece of information in its marketing. And um, I am, I'm kind of amazed to be in this position, frankly, but I am grateful for the opportunity to address this body and uh, hopeful that you find the SB to be active. I certainly have been active uh, in 2021 and, and have a, a situation now where we can add many townhomes, fewer than originally intended, but do a, a lot for this community and its acute housing crisis. So I would hope you find this SP active. Um, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak to keep the SP active? We'll make sure we get everyone. All right, now we're ready for the folks that wish to speak to keep, to pursue that it's inactive. Who would like to go? Come on up. Welcome. Uh, thank you, commissioners. Thank you, chair, secretary, council members. Uh, my name is George Ewing. I live at 4601 Whites Creek Pike. Um, I'd like to thank staff for their work on this report and uh, their, how accurate uh, their report was on finding this SB inactive and advising council to rezone. I noticed that the wording said could AR2A. I'd like to say yes, AR2A. That's what's adjacent. That's what was underneath this SB before it was rezoned. Um, none of the aggregate actions um, that the folks are arguing about meet any of the findings in section 1741063A. 
of the actions required for an SP to be active. Um, and then a PUD is not an SP. Uh, these uh, requirements for an SP to be active are specific to SPs. And then I'd also like to say that the applicant can still develop this site and can still work with the community and the council person uh, and that they would be working with the current community plan uh, that's in place. Uh, so let's be open. Um, that's not a revocation. It's not a punishment or a penalization. It's a finding of inactivity, which is just true. So I would just like to ask you all to do so and recommend a rezoning. I'd also like to thank Councilwoman Gamble for her work on this and a representation of the community. I'm really appreciative to be in this position where it's kind of a triumvirate. Thank you very much. Thank you. If you. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Oh. No, no, uh, point of order. Point of order. Yes, I'm going to give you a rebuttal. Because generally, uh, in this instance, it's like they're the applicant. And so we have traditionally done that and given the owner the chance to rebuke. I know it's a little weird, but that's what we do. Hello, welcome. Home. Hi. Hi, uh, Jennifer Hagen Deer. I live at 681 Brick Church Lane in Whites Creek. Um, I was lucky to sit in your seat about three or four years ago, so I'm pretty familiar with how this works. Um, 11 years ago, this was an SP. Um, you don't get to do SPs and sit on them for 11 years and then just think that you can develop it whenever. Um, I, in all due respect to counsel, you also can't cite court cases that are not analogous and claim they are. Um, if you've pulled permits, if you've done grading, if you've done construction, that is okay. That's an active SP. Marketing the plans, putting sales out there, that's not. Spending money on some drawings, we have consistently held that is not active on the property. It's a trailer park. It's been a trailer park for 11 years. Now it's financially viable to build something like this in an area where it is not a policy does not comply with anything in the surrounding area, and you know this. Um, and it's, it's amazing to me that they would argue that because they talked to the community and because we found out about it, whoops, now it's an active SP. No, that's not how this works either. In fact, in the audit report in 2019, planning was informed that there are not enough ways to check and balance the SPs. It's not our job as a community to keep an eye on all of the SPs in our community. It is not fair and it's not okay and it is not legal just to claim it's active because we pulled, even if they pulled permits, that's not active and they didn't even pull permits. So grading permits and the previous plan with a PUD, that's different. And this is just a different case. We would respectfully and we appreciate the staff and we appreciate the council person for bringing this up and hopefully in White's Creek we'll do a more review of our SPs because apparently they're not gonna call us anymore. Thanks. Thank you. Next, come on up. Welcome. Oh yeah, yeah, That's okay. yeah. Please wipe her. it off if you would. If, I've, uh, I've hugged, I've hugged her kids too. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Hi, my Next name's speaker. Angela Williams. I live at seventy two zero three Old Hickory Boulevard in Whites Creek. Um, I wanted to also thank uh, Councilmember Gamble um, for listening to the community. Um, I was in on that community meeting, and the. Um, and the gentleman from Ryan Holmes uh, had not, was not familiar with the Whites Creek Bordeaux community plan. They had never read it. And, and I thought that was an interesting point um, when we're talking about trying to work with the community. I was intricately involved in the Nashville Next Project with several people in this room. And it was my job to get people there. There were, only, there were over 500 members of the Whites Creek community who participated. 98% said we want to be rural. 98%. So this happened seven or eight years after this had already been approved. That was three council members ago. In your mission, you say to evolve into a more socially, economically, um, environmentally, and sustainable community. This is part of evolution, folks. And, and we know you have heads full of common sense. And so we're asking you to use your common sense today and to support our community and appropriate development for, for our area, our, the gem the historical gem that we have in White's Creek that is ready to be shared with Nashville in an appropriate manner. We welcome appropriate development um, that, that evolves with our community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next speaker.
Thank you. Oops. Sorry, I think my notes, my notes ready here. Okay, you ready? All right, planning commissioners and staff, thank you for your service to our city. My name is Zach Deere and I live at 681 Brick Church Lane in Whites Creek. I agree with planning staff and the council lady that this SP should be inactive. I also applaud planning's recommendation to AR2A zoning to match the T2 policy. If the commission is concerned about the commercially zoned part of the property, I'd recommend it be changed to like a rural center or something like that. I do want to address the developer's claim that marketing materials cause an SP to be active. Having worked in the brand advertising world for 15 years, I can tell you that acquisition marketing, materials, discussions, campaigns are always a sunk cost. In addition to 11 years of inactivity, the trailer park appears to be in violation of many code statutes. This state of poverty that these families live in does not afford this landowner any luxuries. Thank you for your time. Please deem this SP inactive and rezone it to AR2A. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Is, is that right. for a group or uh, yes. which group? So my name is Elise Hudson and I requested five minutes for District 3 Connect, which is a organization out of Whites Creek. Thank you. So um, I live at 4601 Whites Creek Pike and I just wanted to take the time here to um, also very much say that we are standing in support of Councilwoman Gimbel on this one. Um, making the SP inactive is the legal and right thing to do. It's not the community's fault that the developer didn't do their homework. Um, SPs are designed for special circumstances and really um, designed to benefit the community in a way so that there's give and take and some sort of negotiation and clearly that hasn't happened with this community. Um, I'd also like to read directly from the code. So if you look at the determination of an activity in the Metro Code under 1740.106.8.3.a, you're talking about determination of an activity, um, la, 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 and then one of the um, main points here says that it's construction has not begun on the portion of the SP under review. Construction shall mean physical improvements, such as, but not limited to, water and sewer lines, footings, foundations developed, clearing, grading, storage materials, or temporary structures, to, or sorry, temporary structures will not constitute beginning construction. So very clearly, the, the, the legal um, boundary here of inactivity is met. Um, also want to re, uh, re in, reinforce that under T2 rural countryside, the recommended zoning is actually AG. Um, that's out of the Nashville Next Manual, uh, Section 3, Care Community Character Manual, page 115. Also under T2 RM rural maintenance, the recommended zoning is AR2A, which that's on page, um, Section 3 of the Community Character Manual on page 119. So I hope that you will take um, the law into consideration here and do what is right by the law, which is what we rely on you to do. Um, thank you very much. I know that we've had a lot of problems tonight. You guys are awesome for sticking in there and I, I appreciate it. Don't judge me, I'm an IT. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I've had it before. <laughs> no, thank you. All right, any other speakers? Come on up. We want to make sure we get everybody. My name's Dan Montgomery. Oh. Yeah, go right ahead. Yeah. I have property roughly a thousand feet from this, and I fully support our council lady. And um, I agree with everything that's been said so far, and um, I just hope you guys, you know, I grew up on Haywood Lane, and I've watched. Uh, Nolensville Road develop and if anyone's been out Nolensville Road they know what I'm talking about so I really wish that uh, you support our council lady and I agree with her fully thanks guys thank you next speaker and uh, make sure you wipe the microphone again you guys are doing a good job
if you'll wipe the microphone, just to be safe. Yeah, I did request <laughs> the five minutes on behalf of the National Youth Conservation. Yeah, say that into the mic so we get. I did right. request five minutes on behalf of the National Tree Conservation Corps. Yep. Uh, greetings, commissioners. Uh, my name is Will Worrell. I'm with the National Tree Conservation Corps at address of 4115 Dry Fork Road in Whites Creek. Uh, I am uh, here to speak about why I believe that this uh, SP should be determined inactive. Uh, as was discussed, there's three uh, parameters in which the commission is required to consider. Uh, we're not really talking about those. All three of those criteria are not valid for the site. They haven't started construction or any of that. What's being t discussed tonight is uh, the regs say that the commission may consider aggregate actions in the prior 12 months. What's important he here is that it says may, it says it does not say must. So what are the aggregate actions that have been taken in the last 11 years? According to the attorney of the applicant, uh, they have marketed the property, discussed sale with several parties, meetings with community, and preliminary design work. So what exactly is this pre preliminary design work that's been happening? Uh, in the past 12 months? Well, according to Wamble and Associates letter dated June 10th, uh, the, the, the um, SP was actually updated extensively in 2015. That was not in the past 12 months. Uh, additionally, in preparation of the April 2021 community meeting, they made minor uh, revisions to the conceptual plan. Uh, they also um, billed uh, the property owner for meetings with the community uh, including meetings with the council member and the planning department. So not much of that work that they discussed uh, for $17,000 was any actual engineering work. It was primarily meetings. Also during the community meeting on April 8th of 2021, uh, the developer, uh, Ryan Holmes, indicated that they were not under contract with the lands and that they had performed no exploratory studies. <clears throat> uh, so precedence. Uh, the, the attorney for the landowner has indicated that they uh, are uh, pointing to a 2008 SP uh, that was uh, or a 2008 review. That was a PUD. Uh, that's, that's irrelevant and outdated. That was 13 years ago. Uh, in that case, the Habitat for Humanity had actually paid sewer capacity fees. They had uh, prepared environmental site assessments. They paid water uh, and sewer capacity fees, and they even held a groundbreaking ceremony. Those are expensive items uh, that, in that case, that were actually done by the applicant. So it's irrelevant and outdated. I'd like to point your attention to the Planning Commission case called Old Mill uh, SP, that located in Bellevue, that was heard by you all on April 8th of this year. You all found that SP inactive. Uh, similar case, uh, an, an old SP. Uh, in that case, there was actually more coordination than this particular case in White's Creek. In that particular case, there was five state and federal agencies that were consulted with multiple meetings, including three metro agencies. Uh, include, in, in addition, on that project, there were engineering and environmental uh, consultants that were hired to do consulting work. They did core drilling for environmental as well as for the bridge. They did various other on-site surveys. You can see the Planning Commission notes from that April meeting to, to see those items that were actually completed. In that case, the Planning Commission found that SP to be inactive. So a recap of the COVID Whites Creek. Uh, 2010 SP, no real work has been done, no aggregate actions performed, uh, $15,000 of engineering work, which was primarily meetings, no on-site exploratory studies, no survey work, land is not under contract, no environmental site assessments, no tap fees paid, no groundbreaking ceremony, so in closing, there are no aggregate actions on this case. Actions are less than either of the other two examples that were discussed tonight. So for consistency, the Planning Commission must find this SP to be inactive, similar to the Old Mill SP from April of 2021. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else wishing to speak? Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Rebuttal. And then the council member. Mr. Chairman, I'll try to be brief. Um, the assertions that have just been made that there's a difference between 
the park preserve that Habitat had in front of this body in 2008, and this one, number one, being one's a PUD, one's an SP, that has no bearing. The standard is the same, okay? The review standard is the aggregate of actions within prior 12 months to develop the property. Doesn't matter whether it's a PUD or an SP, it's the same review standard. These properties, those two properties, are located in the same council district three in 2008 and, and this particular property. The staff report in 2008 read as follows. No actions have been taken by the owner other than purchasing the property and the preliminary research and planning that is done when any party is contemplating development of the property. Staff recommended inactive. This body disagreed. This body heard testimony, considered written evidence, and decided that Habitat for Humanity was absolutely active in the development and pursuit of their project. The staff report in front of you says, the owners marketed the property for sale, discussed sale with several parties, meetings in community uh, with the community council members, some preliminary design work on revised plans, $17,000 in billing. The proposed revised preliminary design plans in your staff report. The plan is in your staff report. And you just heard some people say they haven't done anything. So, you know, you're weighing the evidence here, right? It's, pro it's a preponderance of the evidence. I just ask you to take a look at the evidence that's in your staff report consider what this commission did in 2008, and it's irrefutable that under that standard of review, this particular property, the Cove, is absolutely active. Thank you. Thank you. And council member? Go ahead, Councilor. Thank you. Councilmember Jennifer Gamble uh, speaking. I didn't say my name the last time. I just want to thank everyone who came out today to speak uh, about this about this project. It, I haven't heard or read anything that changes uh, my my earlier statement today. This this uh, SP is outdated. There hasn't been no uh, meaningful activity on this property uh, for this project in 11 years, and. Um, while it was interesting that there were comments made that maybe they should not have been, maybe the developer should not have been open with the community and myself, I, I hope that that was uh, not the, the course that you all would like to take in the future because there is an opportunity to develop this property, but it will require um, communication and open uh, dialogue with myself and the community to move forward. So with that, I again, uh, ask that you support the staff recommendation to uh, render this SP inactive uh, so that we may go back to the table and um, look at what we can do to uh, provide a development that will enhance uh, the community and that fits within the policy and the desire of the community as well. So thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Seeing no one else wishing to speak, I declare the public hearing closed. And so we're now on to discussion. And Commissioner Tibbs, you want to go first? We're going to try. <laughs> so go ahead. OK. Um, so it's not 2000. What was, I guess, question? What was 2006? What was that date again? Was that the date they, they bought the property? or? Commissioner, may I clarify, are you seeking information about the other case, the Habitat case, or are you seeking information no, no, no. about this case this and case. when it was originally yeah. uh, okay. zoned? This SP was originally approved in 2010. Okay. On that drawing, I saw 2006 really small, and one of the people said 2006, what was that? When that's when they purchased it? Okay. Um, so it's, I, the reason why I was just trying to get to maybe there's 15 years instead of just 10, but... Um, you know, I, I respect the, um, the, the, you know, the, the applicant understand that, you know, they had other, um, you know, they were, they were trying to whatever the circumstances, but I, uh, I believe staff is out, you know, outlined a very, um, you know, step-by-step -step process on why it's inactive. Uh, and, you know, although we, we always do look at past, you know, decisions, that decision, I guess, that, that the uh, applicant brought it was 13 years ago itself, and, you know, that was, there's been a lot happening in the Whites Creek area, and there's a lot of 
you know, uh, very passionate and concerned residents about this area anyway. Um, and, and even still, I still feel like just based off of the, uh, you know, meeting the criteria that was set forth, and that's all we can do a lot of times is just go by exactly what's uh, set forth and, you know, there are specific rules and things that are requirements, and um, I believe that staff went through it, and this is uh, an active SP. Uh, and I, too, as everyone else has said, I, I sure hope you're not going to take this stance and not to uh, cooperate with the community more. I do want to point that out because, you know, that that's the first best step to getting things, um, you know, moving forward. So I uh, uh, support staff recommendation. Thank you. Hey. I'm an uber germaphobe. This is like my personal version of hell. <laughs> I'm vaccinated, so we're going to pray. Um, um, I appreciate everyone coming out. Obviously, we appreciate the Whites Creek neighbors. We see you guys a lot, and so we are, um, we're are we very much appreciative of your engaged nature, for sure. And I also appreciate the um, the property owners, the developers. I am, um, I guess, cognizant of your argument about the equitable nature of it all, having been open with the community and with the councilwoman and thinking that is what has gotten you into this position. Um, I guess the ability to review an SP is a part of the code, so um, it just is what it is as far as the ability of us to look at this again. And I know we hear from folks all the time, both for and against matters, who do not want property to be rezoned, um, but the ability of us to rezone property is out there, and property can't be zoned the same way forever. Circumstances change, and of course, you know, initially the property owner benefited from the ability to rezone property because that's why the property had the initial SP approved. Um, I, I hear everything that both parties have or both sides have said. I don't think that obviously the, the three findings have not been met and so the commission has the ability to look at aggregative actions if it so chooses to think about whether that can satisfy any um, decision that the SP is active, and I, I just don't see that it is active, although I certainly hear what the um, property owners and developer has said about the the effort that has been put into the property. I just don't think it rises to the level of activity. It obviously does not meet the land, does not fit with, or well the SP does not fit within the, the policy, the land policy as it stands today, so it certainly seems prime time for a rezoning, so I would be supportive of the staff's recommendation. I'm also interested to hear what other commissioners have to say. Thank you. Uh, I echo uh, thanking uh, community to stick here with under very difficult, uh, technically difficult circumstances. Um, this one, I do appreciate uh, applicant agreeing uh, there's no uh, construction, there's no right of way, and there's uh, time is clearly past uh, four years. So even uh, applicant uh, representative agree with on that, so that make it easy. So what we are, uh, have to consider is aggregate of action. And you know, we, we as this body uh, discussed uh, SP uh, activity or inactivity or a part activity or inactivity. And I think we are very consistent uh, as a property owner, especially the property is in investment uh, property, uh, their uh, intent is to sell market. So 
sometimes things happen, it may not be sell or it may not be developed when you intend it, but nonetheless, you continue their effort. So having marketing and preparing material uh, does not constitute the aggregate of action because it's just as a part of doing business. So for that sense, uh, it is very uh, clear cut to me. Uh, so there's no uh, action or activity taken by the property owner to uh, constitute uh, aggregative action. So I do agree with uh, staff analysis on this case. So I do find uh, this SP to be inactive. And also uh, considering uh, the new policy and a surrounding area, I do agree with the staff recommendation to rezone to original uh, AL2A. And I am uh, all ears for other commissioners. Uh, thank you, Mina. Um, let me ask a question first. So we've got a note in our staff report that uh, the developer uh, request or the applicant requested a pre-application meeting. Was that for this minor change that they wanted in the SP? Um, yes, I believe it is for a revised plan, which they had been working on. Okay. Um, the reason I ask that question is because I, I think it's important when they are claiming part of their aggregate action is the marketing materials, and in their marketing materials, it, it states that the zoning has already been approved. When they, are, um, they were seeking a change in this SP. So to me, um, the zoning, there, there may have been zoning, there is zoning, there's an SP here, but they themselves were seeking a change in that. So, so that signifies to me that uh, it, it's not like they were planning on using this SP that, that I think we're gonna find inactive. Um, secondly, it sounds like no plans, is that correct? I mean, no, no site plans were applied for or permits applied for for this property? That's correct. We did not have any record of any permits being applied for, and I do not believe that we received any site plans prior to uh, where we are today, or our pre-application meeting, I yeah, suppose. So, it, so no permits were, were filed and, and vested in those rights either. Um, and, and I wanna, I guess, speak to the comments about the message this is going to send to the development community. Um, that veiled threat is, is not how this process works at all. Um, to claim that you thought you were doing the right thing and now you're being penalized for it. Well, you were doing the right thing, but you also, before you get out a board game like Monopoly or Shoots and Ladders, you read the rules of how the game is played. And I know your representation um, knows that SPs are under periodic review. Um, I don't know if you had sought counsel before or after, but SPs, it is, they are reviewed periodically. This, this is a regular occurrence here. Um, and, and so to, to say that you, you tried to engage the community and, and now you're being penalized for it, that's just, that is, that rubs me very wrong today to, to go about, um, to, to, it's a veiled threat to us and that, that's just not appropriate. And so, you know, uh, I think that it is very clear no aggregate of action has happened here that is legitimate for us to find this SP active. And, and so I think overwhelmingly it is, it is inactive. And, and I encourage you to actually work the process with Council Lady Gamble. Um, she has shown to be very capable through this process and the zoning process uh, over the last year and a half on council. And I think you'd find her very easy to work with uh, if, you, if you actually try to do that. So who do you want me to pass off to? We're saving the best for last. <laughs> I'd like to start um, first off again by thanking everybody for, for being here. I know that, um, you know, Spending the time to come and show your support, whether it be for or against something, um, is, is valuable and it's appreciated. Uh, this one's this one's interesting to me, particularly because I've had my own experiences with SPs, and I know there's some there's challenges um, navigating certain economic situations as well as working with planning. I've 
had the pleasure of working with staff, and I think, you know, as a commissioner, leaning on staff is very important. I've also had the pleasure of working uh, with Councilmember Gamble and understand that her character and what she is trying to do is to be a, the best representative of her community that she can. Um, you know, I think, and, I, and I'll be candid, I, I like, the, I like the, 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 the plan that I see in front of me, and, and a proponent of affordable housing, I do understand that there is a great need for that here, and I just think it, it's, a, it's an opportunity to continue to work with the community. I think they're voicing it quite loudly that they don't want this much density there. I think they had the opportunity to do that in National Next. Um, that was presented. I think that, you know, as a developer myself, I think that it's never a bad idea to talk to the community. I think it's just a better idea to present certain things to a community in a certain fashion and have a conversation with them in a certain context. I think you guys have an opportunity to come back to um, council member Gamble or whoever may be the next council member depending on how long you keep the property I don't I would agree with my fellow commissioners and council people that I would encourage you to not avoid that level of community engagement and community education um, and to, to really seek something that works for the community going forward um, and to still consider housing I mean we, we do need it we do need more housing it has to go somewhere in Nashville um, the community of Weiss Creek in particular this neighborhood may be saying they don't want this much um, but that doesn't mean the conversation needs to end. But it, based on what I've seen, I, I feel it, it is rather evident that the, the SP needs to be found inactive in based on the, the rules and regulations that we have before us. I would like to say that, and I don't know this, and maybe we're going to talk about this later and I'm out of place, but there's a conversation about what zoning reverts to. Because um, I feel like there's a certain precedence to be set for what, what was purchased at the time and what rights were there at first. Um, but I'll defer to Commissioner Lawson, I believe is last it is not a whole lot that I can add to the discussions that my fellow commissioners have laid out in front of us uh, the only thing I can say is that I, I live maybe a quarter of a mile from this property in White's Creek on Lloyd Road. And the only activity I've really seen in the 15 years that we have been there have been police cars. Police cars going into that area because it's a high, such a high crime area. We need to do something in that area that develops it along the lines of wh what the people in White's Creek want to see, and that's very important. And with that, I will support the staff recommendation. Do I want to make a motion? Uh, no, you can have the motion okay. first. I'm going to hand it right back to you. Oh, okay. Thank you. All right. So um, one brief comment, just some discussion about in your staff report what the next step would be chairman um, so if we do find it to be inactive um, the staff recommends that it be rezoned uh, in a separate action in the future not tonight and I think part of that to me and probably to the Commission too and we've discussed this um, is to get community input and work with the council member and also work with the developer and so there's a couple of things stated in the staff report that the staff recommends is potentially um, based on the T2 policy guidelines that it potentially could be AR2A zoning district potentially being appropriate uh, other options are a new SP with reduced intensity um, or even a subdivision to create larger residential lots so there are several options that the community and the developer council lady can work on um, so I'm gonna hand it back to uh, the chairman and and say and and let him make a motion to uh, whatever his motion is going to be you're so kind uh, I make a motion that we adopt the staff recommendation I'm gonna try this chairman all right so um, it that's a proper motion which would be to um, make it uh, determine the SP inactive and then the intent would be to do a future zoning thank you that's a proper motion is there a second second, second. any other discussion Commissioner Henley I, 
think everyone sees where this is going, but I do want to take the time to really employ the community and the council member. Do not slide away from the table, right? Don't think that you've won and just slide away. I think it is important that we do send a positive message back to our development community that we do understand Nashville's need for housing and that we do understand we need to evolve and grow. So I encourage you all to not walk away from here today and think that you've won and then just leave, but think that there's more work to be had and greater conversations to come. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner. Ah. <laughs> One comment at a time. Um, and so proper motion, second, discussion, any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of uh, the staff report of finding it this SP inactive, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. And so now we are on to... And uh, I just do want to thank everyone for coming down and sharing your thoughts with us. And sorry for our technical difficulties. Very much apologize. Um, next is uh, under other business, item H, we have historic. Anything in historic? Yep. Here, we'll have pass the microphone. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I'm sure uh, Director will uh, report uh, detail, but uh, as a historic zoning commission, we are very uh, excited. Uh, tomorrow morning's announcement about uh, the second avenue project uh, update, and we look forward to hear great news and progress. And I would like to thank uh, project leader and Lucy and you know other uh, people who are involved in this project, and look forward to hearing it tomorrow morning. Thank you. Jeff, uh, Jeff is not in the part, so uh, I don't have anything on executive committee other than the next meeting is July 22nd. Uh, Director, do you have any yeah. You're on. Am I on? You're on. Wow. Okay. Thank you for all your patience today. I will be working very closely with ITS and general <laughs> services. I'm like, where's the camera? Okay. We will work on it together. Um, so we, uh, we are um, going to be giving a progress report tomorrow on Second Avenue. I have spoken also with um, Councilman O'Connell about coming to um, Council and, and your committee, Councilwoman Murphy, to give some updates on where we are. And so he's supportive of that. Um, we know how important that work is. Um, and so um, the other thing I would say is we may be having some quorum challenges in July and so and possibly in early August so I'm going to be in touch and reconfirm sort of what everyone's schedule is and just urge you to uh, join us if you can the summer months are always very difficult I, I know and understand that um, and we appreciate your service because I know what a what a time commitment it is um, so with that chairman legislative but She's probably got something really important to say. Okay. All right. Seeing no other business, is there a motion to adjourn? We're adjourned. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.